All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Hentges with Beyond the Chart, and this is Technical Analysis Review of the Stock Market. Today is Saturday, June 21st. Welcome to the first day of summer. It officially started at 5.51 a.m. Central Time this morning. So we're going to take a look at the, um, the indices, uh, several of them on a weekly basis, also daily and weekly. We'll take a look at the indicators, and, um, uh, and then we're going to look, take a look at our three ETFs we look at, the SMH, X, XHB, XLF, and then today we're going to look at Apple, Apache, which has been on fire, and Caterpillar. All right, we start off with the Dow Industrials, which was up 25.58 points yesterday. It's kind of inched higher a little bit here over the last couple of days. Uh, really, um, in terms of the last couple of weeks, we've just you know sold off, came back. Um, we are getting a little bit of divergence on this move. Of course, it's not, you know, we haven't it went to a new high, closed at a new uh, all-time high in here. Uh, and the RSI did not go to a high. The DI plus did not go to a high. The demand index slightly did, but I'm not sure if I trust my reading on the volume on this. Take a look on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis... You can see the last three days have kind of been, or three weeks have been kind of overlapping and basically a little bit of a sideways move in here. Uh, we're right above this upper trend line. And what upper trend line am I talking about? I'm talking about the upper trend line that's connecting the tops of 2000, 2007, and now 2013 slash 14 in here. Or actually, let's just say 14. So, and it's interesting, isn't it? I've talked about this before in a blog. That's every seven years, 2000, 2007, 2014, and we're getting tops. So, um, you know, that's why we're on alert for uh, what's going on. The S&P 500, we're up above this ending diagonal and we're getting divergence here, the closes with these tiny trading bars. Uh, we're getting divergence across the board up in here. So uh, could be a sign that uh, selling is going to be coming our way. Uh, again, we're still trending on a weekly basis, though. I mean, it's trend is your friend until it ends, as they say. Uh, and so right now it's continuing to trend. A um, little bit of divergence, but on a broader term. Uh, but sometimes the divergence have a tendency to just stay in place for a while. All right, let's take a look at the NASDAQ, too, on a daily and weekly. The NASDAQ on a daily basis has got these divergences coming in. Not getting the double divergence on DI plus and DI minus, just on DI plus is showing up. Uh, sometimes the best turn uh, happens when you get it on both the DI plus and the DI minus at the same time. I'll show you that if I, if I see it. Um, on a weekly basis, you can see how it's, how it's acting in here. I mean, last four to five weeks has been a nice rally in the NASDAQ index. And, uh, you know, we're getting divergence. The RSI has not gone to new high. DI plus has not gone. Uh, demand index is not. And um, all right, let's take a look at the New York Composite and then the Russell 2000 on a daily basis. And again, the New York Composite divergence is showing up. Here's this double divergence I'm talking about where the DI minus did not go to a new low. Now you would think this would continue to weaken if this was really strong, okay? But it didn't. And you know, you would think this would push to a new high uh, as the prices go up, but it didn't, okay? So here we're getting this double divergence on DI plus, DI minus, and divergence on the RSI. Russell 2000. The Russell actually pushed to slightly higher reading on the RSI, so you don't really have a solid divergence there. You're seeing it on DI plus. Uh, so again, we're questioning: do we do we have a shoulder in here? Um, you know, it's it's uh, the symmetry seems to be losing uh, itself, and over here on the right side. So we'll see how long that can continue to trend. All right, that's. We talked about the Russell. I think that's the indices. We're going to take a look at the short-term trading index. 
and again we do not have an extreme reading yesterday's was reading was 1.09 and the nine day in here the blue is at a reading of 0.97 okay so we're not getting that reading down in here that we'd like to see to tell us that maybe a, a top is in um but that could be a day or two reading away all we need is a, an extreme reading uh the uh, the vix cboe there it is market volatility index okay you know we're getting the divergence that's showing up in here we were up yesterday um so that's kind of interesting i mean they were up a little slightly uh, market was up and this was up uh so kind of you know continue to watch this this could be signaling that something's uh, about to happen um the high low index high low index uh popped on friday a little bit uh 312 net new highs versus new lows uh, and so we're starting to spike back up in here. Uh, we could be trying to challenge uh, back up into these kind of readings. We'll have to see. Nothing extreme yet. Again, not getting extreme readings on the indicators. All right, let's take a look at the uh, semiconductor ETF, which has been on fire, as you know we've seen, and it's just continued to ride. Talk about getting above the Keltner channel and being able to just ride like this kind of like apache what apache's doing we'll talk about apache in a few minutes but man this is just you know the moving average is just going straight up now nothing goes straight up forever so uh, it's extremely overbought uh we'll just have to see um you know what it does got a little doji bar here on friday um we'll see what kind of pullback we get and when uh, but it's had a heck of a move. So it's not telling us the market. It's not leading us down. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, the next one is the uh, home builders, which is a little bit different uh, scenario. It's not nearly as strong. I mean, look, it's, it's going this way. It came back, popped back a little bit up to the basically this trend line that it had broken in here. And then now it's uh, it's basically kind of struggling to go sideways, except the 21 has broken above the, the 55. So uh, that means we've got the 55 above the 233 in here. We've got the 21 above the 55. And again, these are all simple moving averages, okay? Of 21 simple, 55 simple, 233. And this is the 10 EMA. And I know people have asked me before, you know, why am I using these? I use 21, 55, 33 because they're Fibonacci numbers. Um, I know they're slightly different from a lot of what you'll hear on TV and a lot of different analysts who use. Uh, I like the Fibonacci numbers because I think they really, um, uh, th there's a lot of um, evidence that the Fibonacci numbers are in nature and in into the universe. Uh, and we can go into that at, at some other time. But uh, And they tie back into the Elliott Wave Theory very nicely. Uh, with the retracement uh, measures that you make in terms of percent retracements, that type of thing. Now, the 10 EMA is is kind of a trending uh, signal line that I like to use. So that's why we're using those. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, XLF. I can find it. What's right on it? Start looking someplace else. And Okay, we're getting a little bit of divergence in here. Let me think. I think this is well actually it hasn't pushed to new highs so it's it's bounced back but it didn't bounce back to a new high above this point so we're not truly looking for divergence yet but it's it's not super strong in terms of the bounce back by any means now the other thing to look at on this is this trend okay this trend since last year so here's the 12 month trend and you could just see how it's just, here's the 12 month trend in here. It just comes down, bounces, comes down, bounces, comes down. And um, I don't know, it just looks like it's, it's getting a little bit tighter and we'll just have to see. I mean, if this, if this breaks, that's gonna be a pretty strong signal that, uh, that it's, uh, the environment has totally changed. All right, those are the, uh, the XLF. Let's take a look at Apple. We're gonna start off with Apple, then Apache, and then Caterpillar. Uh, Apple, that's Apple on a weekly basis. I'm looking for regular Apple daily. Okay, now 
Apple uh, yesterday pulled down what it sold. Uh, it was down 0.95, uh, closing at 90.91. Now it's closed below the 10, uh, like it did here. Bounce back, closed below the 10. Yesterday was uh, Thursday was a slight close below the 10, I believe. Checking at 92. Yeah, it was. So. I'm expecting a pullback because I think, again, as I talked about, um, I think we're in multiple five wave moves going on. OK, so I think we've got one, two, three. I'm expecting a fourth wave pullback not to go below this point. OK, because this is a wave one in here. Uh, you know, this type of bracket, rounded brackets, let's call it so. 23% retracement of this move. What am I measuring? I'm measuring the length of what I think is a wave three. Okay, I think we had a one, two, three, four, five. I think we had five waves up in here. Okay, five waves in the fifth wave. And so here's the wave three. And if that's accurate, then I'm expecting a pullback that could be anywhere from 23.6 to say 38.2. Pull back into this area, which would tie back into possibly touching the 55 as it continues to push up. Once that fourth wave is done, I'm expecting a fifth wave rally that uh, we'll have to see, depending on where this point is, we'll be able to estimate where we think the fifth wave will go. But that's my that's my take on a on a short term basis on Apple and Apple on a weekly basis. Um, <clears throat> You could see how back at this top in uh, 2012, September 2012, how there was pretty solid divergence that was going on. Uh, here's this double divergence on DI plus and DI minus and on the demand index. We're not seeing any of that now at this peak. OK, so that's why it kind of confirms for me that, you know, this this push up in here is fairly solid. We're not getting divergence. We get this pullback, we're going to get another rally, and then we're going to be off into another five wave, you know, continuing this five wave sequence. So, uh, right now, uh, Apple looks like it's in bull mode, but even when you're in bull mode, you get little pullbacks and corrections. So, that's what we're watching for right now. All right, Apache. Where is their pairs of Apache weekly? Oh, it's right below it. Apache on a daily basis. Again, there is no divergence occurring on the RSI. This is solid. This is extremely overbought. Apache's at an RSI of 90.5. Uh, nothing showing on DI plus or DI minus uh, in terms of divergence. And the ADX is at a reading of 52. Extremely, extremely strong, extremely overbought. So with that, you know, again, when it gets that strongly overbought, What's that signaling to me is the strength of the trend and that this thing is truly blasting off. That's that's my interpretation of it. Now, could we get a move pullback? Yes, and I'm expecting it because uh, as we'll show you, we'll come back to this. As we look at on a weekly basis with Apache, you know, I think it's breaking out of a very large head and shoulders bottom. And here's the neckline, okay? A lot of times you can get a pullback right to the neckline and then it takes off again, it continues the uptrend. That's what I'm looking for and uh, actually would like to see so that we can get on board on this thing right now because I'm not in it. And, um, you know, we wrote it early, got out and then did not get back in. And that was a mistake. Should have got back in right around in here and just rode this thing. So what I'd like to see is a pullback back down into here kind of a, a wave four we've got an extended wave three going on in here and uh and a chance to get on board but i think apache's got a lot of room to the upside to go as a matter of fact you know, let's take a look and on a weekly basis if you had to measure you would measure the height of this head okay and uh, you would simply look at the chart and actually measure the actual distance on the chart not just the number of points because this is all in a semi log so percentages work in here and you were talking about a challenge up to this I think we got a chance to challenge 130 on Apache um, timing I don't know I mean who knows when it's going to take to get there but right now that's my estimate that where this thing's going to go 
Okay, and the last thing we'll take a look at is Caterpillar today and Caterpillar on a daily basis. I think uh, it's had a nice move up in here. I do think we're in a fifth move, and I think we're seeing five waves in the fifth move. Uh, I think the fifth move, um, let's take a look at divergences. We're seeing any. We're starting to see some in here, uh, divergence showing up on the RSI and on the blue. It really didn't go to a new high on the blue with this move on the, on the DI+. Plus. The demand index did not, although it did push here on this on this move here uh, yesterday. So that's kind of interesting. So two out of the three are signaling. I do think that we're getting another um, that we could push higher, like maybe 111 or slightly higher um, you know, based on some Fibonacci uh, projections of the move of the waves. Let's take a look at cat on a weekly basis. Here's the previous highs back in here in uh, 2011 and early 2012, back up around 116, 116 and a half or so. So you're gonna get you're gonna get selling's gonna kick in when you hit up in here if we get that far, and that's not that far away. So I think there's a pretty good chance we're in the the last throes of the rally here with with Caterpillar. And it may not even get that far, but um, so somewhere between I think 111 and 116 is what we're going to be looking at on cat. All right, that's um, that's about it for today. We looked at the markets and we looked at these three um, uh, key stocks, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll take a look at uh, trade ideas. We'll review what we had over the last week, and if there's anything new for the coming. Up. This is Joe from Beyond the Chart. Um, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe so you can get email updates, access to the Trade Ideas webpage and other things that we're doing. And uh, I appreciate you stopping by. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.